The MCU has been quite the adventure. A franchise built up for over a decade, with a core focus on characters and world building. Readapting decade old comic book characters for the big screen. Allowing us to get invested in their stories, establishing continuity throughout several films, and building up to blockbuster collaborations with our heroes. There have been plenty of superhero films in the past, but it wasn't until the success of Blade that they truly became profitable. Setting the stage for IPs like Spider-Man, the X-Men, even Daredevil and the Incredible Hulk, and then raising the bar even higher with Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. My picks for the two films that help superheroes be taken seriously in the mainstream, grounding the genre and managing to reach a wider audience. But when it comes to the MCU, there's no film that deserves more credit than the first Iron Man and the incredible performance of Robert Downey Jr. One of the best origin stories and the perfect way to set up a franchise. And now we have reached a point where the world that they've worked so hard to build has been torn to shreds. And the characters that paved the way for the franchise have all either been replaced or disgraced. And in some cases, both. What are you going to do? Each one a desperate attempt to pass the torch to new, more affordable actors and actresses that can carry on the legacy. But none of them is insultingly frustrating as Riri Williams' Ironheart. A character that confirms that not only do they have no understanding of why this worked in the first place, but they genuinely don't care about their own legacy and are all too eager to permanently stay in the franchise just to keep the money train flowing. And I think the best way to highlight this is a simple scene comparison. Breaking down the introduction of both characters and trying to explain why Iron Man is so beloved and why Iron Heart might be the most forced character I've ever seen. He is introduced in the back of a military vehicle obviously not dressed for combat while he sips his scotch. And after noticing the vibe of the room, he tries to strike up a conversation to cut the tension. I feel like you're gonna pull over and snuff me. What, you're not allowed to talk? Hey, Forrest. We can talk, sir. Oh, I see, so it's personal. It would be really easy to remember the scene just for the jokes and banter, but what stands out to me the most is the efficiency and how much they manage to accomplish in one scene. Before he even says a word, we get a clear idea of how people view him and the mystique he has managed to cultivate that even armed soldiers are nervously anxious around him. No, you intimidate them. Good God, you're a woman. I honestly have him to call that. I mean, I'd apologize, but isn't that what we're going for here? We get a showcase of his charisma and his ability to control the room, something that is a key feature of his throughout the series. And what I think is most impressive is we get a brief insight into his ideology, cleverly disguised as a joke. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. Yeah, peace, I love peace. Be out of a job with peace. And after being severely wounded by his own weapons, they set the stage perfectly for a flashback, where they take the time to explain his entire history and reputation, while also hinting to future conflict with the film's villain, while continuing to reinforce the traits that they established in the first scene, his captivating mystique, his ability to win the room, and how seriously he takes his business. It's an imperfect world, but it's the only one we've got. I guarantee you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace, I'll start making bricks and beans for baby hospitals. They show us enough to get the full picture of his life as a billionaire genius, while also displaying his flaws and arrogance. Hey, Tony. Remember me? Sure don't. A part of the reason Robert Downey Jr. was picked in the first place was because of his turbulent past and believing that that would translate on screen. And they definitely nailed it. The amount of work that they put in to develop his character in such a short amount of time is why the cave scene is so impactful. After being captured and forced to build his own missile for the enemy, we see Tony showcase all of his skills, thanks to the help of Yezin, the man who saved his life. Even under such harsh conditions, he still displays his technical knowledge and shows us why he's considered a genius. And upon his escape, he's forced to truly question his life's work as he listens to the words of a dying man after Yezin sacrifices himself to buy him time. Both here due to the weapons that Tony created. Come on, you gotta go see your family, get it. My family's dead. I'm going to see them now, Stark. Thank you for saving me. Don't waste that. Don't waste your life. He returns home with his newfound perspective, eager to make a difference in the world, but no longer with weapons of mass destruction. I saw young Americans killed by the very weapons I created to defend them and protect them. And I saw that I had become part of a system that is comfortable with zero accountability. I came to realize that I have more to offer this world than just making things that blow up. And that is why, effective immediately, I am shutting down 
The weapons manufactured division is still here now. So he goes to work on perfecting the suit that he used to escape the cave, using the arc reactor technology he developed. And we get to watch the entire creative process, from concept to testing to paint job. Stay put. Nice. You, you, you're no benefit at all. Move down to the top. And after being undermined by his own business partner, he's forced to take actions into his own hands, culminating in the iconic scene where he rescues the hostages and destroys the stolen weapons, trying to provide some kind of justice. <laughs> fantastic and truly memorable introduction, but why is it well written? Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not Tony Stark. There's a reason character is king when it comes to storytelling. When you have a character arc, it could be incredibly satisfying to reflect on all the events that led them to this point, going through the journey with them and watching them change over time. It's an appreciation built on perspective. But with introductions, it's the opposite. What can you achieve with a blank slate to gain my attention and appreciation? And I find both equally fascinating to explore. Especially when you consider the fact that there's characters like Rey and Mando who can go for years without proper development. You have to appreciate that there was a time that we can get this done in a matter of minutes. Getting a clear understanding of the character, how they view the world, and how the world views them. It takes talents and hard work to achieve that in such a short amount of time. And rather than just rushing to the fight scenes, they had the good sense to take almost the first hour of the movie to focus on character. And when you consider the fact that much of Iron Man was improvised and carried by the charisma of the actors, it's amazing to look back and praise what they achieved here. I am Iron Man. Now, let's compare that to Ironheart. She is introduced as an MIT student after Wakanda discovers she built a vibranium detector and are trying to track her down. And considering the incredible blueprint they have access to, you would expect a clear understanding of how to make a character appealing. But instead, the very first thing we see her do is snatch someone's phone out of their hand and say you forgot to pay me. It slipped my mind, so 800, right? 800 was yesterday's price. A very strange choice for an introduction, as there's plenty of other ways to show us that she's a genius, without being a prick. Shuri attempts to blend in as a student, and after wrongfully assuming that it was another drop-in, she is shocked to see the Princess of Wakanda at her door. I'm here by the vibranium detector that you built for the CIA. She explains that she's in great danger and that she can't stay here. The machine that she created is causing problems for Wakanda and Namor's people, and they're coming after her. Gather your things and come with me. Right now. But Riri says she can't because she has class. Almost like she didn't hear a word Shuri just said. I got differential equations class in like 15 minutes. Then instead of discussing it further, she tries to run away to the bathroom. Ooh! Only to be blocked by the bald-headed demon, who must have climbed up through the toilet to break in. And then she proceeds to yell at them to get out, totally ignoring Shuri's warning once again. Do not! Take another step toward me. And whips a boombox at her head so we can get some comedy. She scoffs at Riri's lack of manners. And even after having a boombox whipped at her forehead, they still have her say, I like it. Because apparently that's Marvel's only trick. Having established characters that we like say that they like our new hero. Because that's how you do character, right? I like this one. But Riri lifts up more things to throw for absolutely no reason. And then the BHD threatens to knock her out and take her by force. And after being threatened by a spear-wielding madwoman from under the sink, and warned that she's in great danger staying here, the film decides it's time for more jokes to cut this tension. You need to be conscious of the way that you look. Walking around here with that ash on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we know she's a warrior who doesn't care about vanity, they still have her be embarrassed because comedy comes before character. Rather than creating a joke that can give us some real insight, we now get forced humor jammed into any scene, no matter who's involved, infecting every character like a plague. Even Shuri, five seconds after warning her that she's in danger, is now getting in on the jokes when this is supposed to be a serious situation. You've been here for one scene and you're already damaging characters I like with your shitty writing. Go away! She takes them to the warehouse where she keeps her gear. And instead of the clarity of a presentation or getting the chance to see her display her skills firsthand, they settle for casual throwaway lines instead. 
As they mentioned that she built the vibranium detector for class, she has her own Iron Man suit. She's just so amazing. No need to show us any of this. Just tell us directly how incredible our characters are. That's how we do it, right? The building is surrounded by cops and they prepare to make their escape. And in less than 10 minutes into her introduction, we get her first action scene. The character work is over, people. It's time to beat up some bad guys. Except unlike Iron Man's first scene against actual terrorists who stole his shit, these cops are just doing their job and are ultimately just trying to keep her safe. As much as they botched the intro to rush to this fight, this is still a great opportunity for character building and to see how she handles this delicate situation. Oh shit, she got an Iron Man suit! Hey, where you are? What the fuck? Instead of just flying out immediately as the roof was clearly open, she blasts one of them in the face first and makes her escape. What the hell is your problem? Shuri and the demon drive away with the cops in full pursuit. And after being tracked by a surveillance drone and having the bridge cut off, we get the incredible honor of seeing her rip off one of Tony's most iconic scenes. Remember how when learning to fly, he discovered the icing problem and almost got himself killed? But somehow Riri is already a grandmaster at flying this thing as she charges into the sky without even wearing a mask for oxygen and then manages to reach her destination just in time and blast the drone out of the sky right before passing out. Then she ignores the laws of gravity and gives a big fuck you to G-Force as she regains consciousness at the last second and flies over the surface of the water perfectly fine because she's so much better than that bum Tony. A bullshit disgrace of a scene that leaves me with just two questions. One. Why does she need an Iron Man suit with plot armor this thick? And two, can this scene get any worse? Three, two, one. How do you do it, Marvel? How do you keep fucking this up? From the desecration of the dawn, to Wanda enslaving children, to the Black Widow genocide, it's become painfully clear that you don't understand this genre, when so many of the most iconic superhero moments involve protecting the innocent. Because as we learn from Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. You fucking morons. You had an opportunity here to show Ironheart using her suit to protect the civilians and police from the reckless Wakandans. Much like they did with Cap and Bucky. Or like they did with Daredevil and Punisher. It's what you do when you care about the morality of your characters. Remember when Batman risked his life to prevent Gordon's men from walking into an ambush? Or when Spider-Man blacked out trying to stop that train? Now we are in the no accountability era where nothing matters. Superheroes no longer save people. The accords that they established in Civil War are a distant memory, and any shred of world building or political ramifications that they established in that film has been slowly snapped away. She spends the rest of the film either getting knocked out or providing comic relief until they need her at the very end to beat up the bad guy. And unlike Tony, who was hardened by his experience in captivity and ready to risk it all. I have no idea why the students who didn't even want to come in the first place because she had class is somehow fully ready for battle. From blowing up members of her own city to fighting mutants overseas, there's nothing she can't handle. Riri gives Shuri the alley-oop and then Namor goes on to be defeated by a fucking heater. A crap ending to a crap fight. But why is it terribly written? To peace. If I was to pick one word that stood out the most to me upon looking back at Tony's introduction scenes, it would have to be opportunistic. Taking advantage of every moment to develop his character. From the very first scene, every glance, every joke, every line of dialogue is used to the fullest with clear intentions. But with Riri, all that comes to mind is waste. From the forced humor, making it impossible to get an understanding of her personality, to completely skipping the development of any of her technology, which is something that's essential if you want to create a believable replacement for Iron Man, all the way to her complete lack of care for the safety of others, just for an action scene. Where the process of Tony going from warmonger to vigilante was clear to follow, I have no idea what their goal was with her. From her morality to her motivation, they somehow managed to botch everything. The time dedicated to developing characters is what made this franchise work in the first place. And now they have traded in the attention to detail that built such a loyal fan base in exchange for forced characters that nobody wants, expecting the same results. Tony created a new kind of technology in order to escape his captors and fight for his freedom. He then went on to use that technology for the good of mankind after seeing all the harm his weapons have caused. You're gonna kill yourself, Tony. I shouldn't be alive. Unless it was for a reason. Riri built a machine to spite her teacher because he said she sucks and couldn't do it. If 
professor said I'd never be able to do it. This machine started a war that got innocent people killed. And when asked to help, she tells them to fuck off because she has math class. These two are not the same. And the fact that you put so little effort into a character this important is another cold reminder of why the MCU is dying a slow, embarrassing death. I just finally know what I have to do. And I know in my heart that it's right. The professor said I'd never be able to do it. To be young, gifted, and black though, right? 